Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 149 of the show. Uh, almost halfway to episode 300, it's so close, almost much closer to 200 now that I think about it. <laughs> And only one episode away from 140, uh, 150. Uh, I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Little RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. And this week I have four new Lit RPG reviews for you folks. I know just four seems like a low number. Remember, this is a, a holiday week. Um, spent most of my time with family, so a little, little behind, I suppose. Uh, but I know everybody else is hopefully reading and spending time with their families and getting away and you know, loving some liberty. But the four reviews I have for you include Fairhaven Online, uh, Winter Dungeon Land book number three. And in addition to that, we'll have Small Medium, Big Trouble. Uh, and then Blackthorn, A Beautiful Nightmare. And last but not least, Refuge, Land of Dreams, book number three in that series. Before we get into that, we're going to, of course, start with the Lit RPG News. <laughs> And a little bit of news. We don't have a lot of little RPG news this week. Um, so we're going to have one quick little note. And then we're going to do something a little special. Um, Luke Chimalinqua, author of the Ascent Online series, released new artwork uh, for his series, this time for the character Freya. So very pretty picture. I have to say it's really uh, one of the better pieces, in my opinion. Love the artwork. Very really little anime-ish. Um, but super, super nice. Actually, one of the like, really nice pieces. One of the nice ones I think would actually I would personally frame up on a wall. Um, hopefully at some point you'll be able to purchase these as print copies. So good for Luke. Um, now, uh, the special thing, because again, that was the only little of news we had this week. Um, I decided at the behest, the suggestion of someone else uh, in the community, they said we should do a, a year in review kind of thing. As the last episode of the year 2018, I decided, hey, that's a great, great thing, considering we almost have no Liturgy news and very few reviews this week. Um, so I just, of course, want to wish everybody happy holidays. New Year's is coming up. Uh, so I thought I'd talk about a few of the significant episodes of, of the year, some significant Liturgy news, and, of course, some of the fun stuff we have about the podcast. Um, this pot year, the Liturgy podcast has reviewed over 320 novels um that is that is a lot of stuff uh that is you know so 320 new literature reviews came out this year for this particular uh podcast um but that's not the only changes we had this year of course the little RPG got a fancy new background uh we went from the kitchen look uh, which is very nice to me it's it, you know, inviting you into my home kind of look to something that i think a lot more people seem to enjoy we even had a whole poll um, where viewers could, could, um, vote on, on their favorite backgrounds or if they want anyone at all. And the votes came in and said, Hey, yeah, we would like a fancy looking background. So we got a green screen. We put a new background for everybody. And, and I guess people think it's more professional. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, that was a nice little change for us. Additionally, we also added a new little BG podcast, um, to, to the family. We, uh, produce, uh, the little RPG audiobook podcast, um, on our site and through our, through our network. Um, and it's hosted by the wonderful entertaining Ray Johnson every single week. He now um, listens to and reviews lit RPG audiobooks. Um, and he's done uh, quite a few episodes at this point, And every single episode has been really good, really clean, really fun. And he actually does a few more promotional things than I do. Like he'll get uh, like audiobook codes and things from from people, from from companies. Um, and so he's done more more fun things, I think. But still, really good stuff. I'm really proud that we've expanded our, our network of audiobook uh, or, or podcast, rather, and video vlogs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for, for being supportive of that additional um, podcast stream. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, the most viewed Little RPG Podcast episode, according to our, our analytics, is episode number 97 of the Little RPG Podcast. Go figure. That was the one time we did a a fun giveaway contest uh, to celebrate episode 100 of the show, uh, which happened this year. Um, and you know, so people, oddly enough, tuned in for the rules and for the contest and to, you know, to to enter. So there you go. Um, also, the three most reviewed reviews or viewed views viewed reviews on the Lit RPG podcast this year are Lions Quest, Dual Wield, The Game, and also Awaken on Land Precipice. Uh, and so those three novels 
Um, again, these are just according to the views for reviews on our Little Pretty Podcast recommendation list. Um, those are the top three ones for the year. Uh, the three top searches in LittleRPGPodcast.com are definitely um, town building, female protagonists, and finished series. All that means is that that's the most commonly searched for terms on when somebody does a search on the web page or on the recommendation page. They look forward most commonly town building, female protagonist, and finished series in that order. So uh, that's what people who are LittleBG readers are looking for, apparently. Uh, the most viewed news articles on the Little RPG Podcast website is definitely going to be the article Michael Scott Earl when he got suspended from Amazon um, and the ongoing conditions of his relationship with Amazon. We've done updates uh, ever since the story broke um, earlier this year in the summer um, and, and all the things that go into including the things he said uh, with quotes from him and all the things he's asked his readers to do to help um, including the most recent things um, just on December the 14th. So that has been definitely the most viewed page um, on well, one of the most viewed pages, definitely the most viewed news article that we've put out uh, this year. Um, and some other significant liberty news, in addition to that, is that Jay and Cipriano, in addition to MSC, both got permaban this year. Um, there was a whole like period of time during the year where Amazon was temporarily banning Little Bridge authors or warning them for suspicious page reads, um, including myself. And some people just fled from KU because it was definitely related to the KU, KU system, the Kindle Limited system. Um, and they just stopped being Kindle Limited. Uh, we lost a lot of... <laughs> unfortunately good authors from that particular program um they still publish it's just that they didn't want to take the chance of getting perma banned um like my scott Earl or jay serpiano for things that they didn't do or things that are beyond their control it has more recently come out uh several articles showing how people are gaming the amazon system including um putting up fake reviews for them and then reporting people and also um also oh, like signing people up for black market um, things and then like having that person that they signed them up for in trouble for them, uh, even though the original person didn't do anything. So a lot of weird things come out about um, so how people are gaming the Amazon system to hurt their competitors. Um, so that might be bleeding into some of the things we're seeing now or have in the past. Um, other interesting Little RPG news we found for the year include, includes Dakota Kraut, author of several great Little RPG series. The most popular one is probably going to be the Divine Dungeon series um, or the Completions Chronicles. Um, he launched his own publishing company called Mountain Dale Press. Um, and he's actually published four books from that company this year from other um, Lit RPG authors. And most of them have done really, really well. So, um, also, um, Good news articles or interesting things from the year. Travis Bagwell launched Brook Brawl, uh, bookbrawl.com. Um, it was kind of a, supposed to be a place where like new, um, new stuff from Amazon and new stuff from the um, uh, free world, like Royal Road, or just like stories that are in, in still as works in progress um, could be uploaded for readers to look at. And so that is there. It exists. Also, Blaze Corvin lost Game Lit rpg.com which is a, a, a kind of a similar thing where it's supposed to be a collection of all the liberty stories that come out all the time including reviews and like compilation of reviews that's still kind of a work in progress to some degree um i still think that the liberty podcast does a, a great weekly job of doing similar things but everybody kind of specializes and kind of tries to do their own thing so nobody's the power apparently uh but those are all great sites um additionally um the game society raised over six thousand dollars this year for the saint Jude's children hospital um that is a facebook page called the game society um that who who are a collection of like authors and readers who love game lit and liturgy and that group again raised over six grand uh for st jude Children hospital we made sure to donate of course and it was a really great um charity drive so good for them uh, another highlight of the year is probably gonna be dragon con 2018 it was really super fun. I personally got to hang out with a lot of Liberty authors and readers. Um, we stood in long lines. Um, we have a picture up on the screen for the video version of the podcast of, of Jeff Hayes, who cosplayed as his character like for Life Reset. Um, we also had some other narrators cosplay uh, for their characters as well as, uh, as far as well as like you know fans and authors cosplaying. But also the Liberty booth was there. We also had a, a couple of meetups um, at Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was really just fun in general. It's one of the highlights of the year to definitely for, for me personally and for the podcast we try to film it all um also uh, another notable news little bridge article was that uh, <laughs> a little bridge novel got mentioned on public television on the view which is a major the major uh, the syndicated uh, morning 
um, chat show. Uh, it was on, I was like the girls reads or something. And Whoopi Goldberg actually recommended Threadbare, written by Andrew Sipple. Um, and it was like, Oh, this is, it's probably the most widely publicized literature novel, apparently, um, as far as like mainstream, like media goes. So that was, that was definitely kind of fun. Uh, so those are just some of the highlights for the, um, significant lit RPG uh, news for the year. There are definitely other things in the last couple of years, but these are the ones for this year. So there you go. Um, on to some stuff that is out now. Uh, having a chance to read it, of course, including My Am- Antimos, uh, the Dark Herbalist series, book number four. This is the last book in the series. It'll be called Finding a Body. And again, the author has said that this is the last book in that series for now. He's going to be moving on to doing some other stuff. So but this should be an interesting completion for that series. I'm also out now as Polyglot, um, as is I Am Gamer book number two. Um, the font on the title um, is all in caps, so it makes it look like it's either One Am Gamer 2 or I Am Gamer eh, eh. Uh, Either way, uh, it's hopefully going to be a fun story. I enjoyed book one personally. Um, also out now is End of the Black book number 17, uh, Staking a Claim. Uh, and as is Y-A-O-S, yet another OP story, Limitless Adventures, book number one. So that's out as well. Um, in new Little Bridge audiobooks that came out this week, you just have one. It's going to be Guild, the Little Bridge novella, Monsters and Maces, book number three. I was super surprised, actually, to see this as an audiobook. Uh, the ebook just came out a couple weeks ago, so it really hasn't been that long. Um, and the, it's kind of a short story, so, you know. It, but it is out. It's it's the, a new Little Bridge book for you guys to enjoy. Um, in the c- upcoming Little Bridge, we have some new um, additions to this particular list. Um, but I'm just going to read off a bunch of stuff to you guys. Uh, on January 1st, we're going to have Break, uh, Evo Born, book number one. We're also going to have, on January 1st, Worlds Unbound, which is the sixth book in the System Apocalypse series by Tao Wong. January 1st is also going to be the release date for Rexus Side Quest, which is... Uh, Officially titled the third book in the Completionist Chronicle series. I'm not sure how tightly it's going to be tied with that main character because it is. It looks like it's a different main character. Um, also out on January 1st is going to be Gathering Strength, character development book number two um, from Aaron J. So you might want like that one out. It's the second book in that series. Um, on January the 9th, it'll be Level Up Knockout, which is a, a, a book is set in the Level Up universe by the same author, but it's from... Um, a different main character. So also out on January the 11th, it'll be dungeon wars, which is from Jeffrey Falcon Logan. So he said, it looks like he's launching a new, or I should say an expanded series from his dungeon, uh, uh, his dungeon series, the slime dungeon chronicles. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what he's actually doing with that. But apparently he's bringing back some old dungeon characters, uh, just set like, I think, um, in the future from that universe. So it, and I'm not, Go check it out. It'll be out on January 11th if you do enjoy. On January the 14th, Bitter Book Number 5 is going to be out. On January the 19th, Steel Hounds, The Artar Chronicles, Book Number 1 um, is going to be out. It says it's a little bit novel. On January 23rd, uh, it's going to be Volper Alformi, Book Number 1. Um, this is apparently going to be a translation uh, from a Ukrainian author uh, for Little RPG. It says in the title it's a Little Bridge series. Um, not much else is known about it uh, besides that in, in the novel description. On January 29th, will be Neverfall Catacombs, book number two. On February the 14th, the fourth book in the um, Good Guy series called Four, The Loot. On March 25th, it'll be The Final Trial, level up book number three. I think this particular novel is going to get a little more fantasy sci-fi in the, in the level up series. Um, if you've read books one and two, you'll kind of know where it's going. I think a little bit why the cover art here definitely takes a departure from like the real life lit RPG kind of concept. Um, and yep, that's it. That's everything that'll come out on March 25th. So that's, that's several months in advance, but that's, that's all we have. Okay. On to new releases and reviews. Okay, folks, uh, and new releases and reviews we're going to begin with Free Haven Online Winter Dungeon Land book number three in that particular series. It is 500 pages, $5.99, so very nicely priced. It is also available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Great Uncle Winter has a dark secret, milk and cookies. He doesn't just like them, he needs them to maintain his essential goodness. When an abominable snow rat infestation devours his entire stash on the North Pole, he starts to turn evil. 
and Justin's guild must reunite a lost tribe of elves that abandoned the North Pole centuries ago to bring the big man in, in the red the greatest cookies in all the land. The problem is the lost tribe doesn't want to be found, and monsters turn up around every single corner. They'll battle frost wyverns, frozen rat fiends, and other terrors of the cold in the name of protecting winter festival cheer. Now that the quest to unlock the elusive log button has been revealed, Justin needs to assemble a team of adventurers to travel to the North Pole before winter celebration. What they find there could change the holidays in Freehaven Online forever. And an end to their imprisonment in virtual reality is at stake, and the only way their holiday wishes to return to the real world will come true is if they can save a virtual Santa. So there we go. This is definitely a, <laughs> a very holiday winter-esque themed kind of story. Um... If you like, like, I think of it this way. Um, this does a really good job of like translating and, and, and putting it in an album form, all those like winter expansions, all those winter and Christmas modules, uh, for your favorite MMOs. Like every MMO I've ever played has always had like every year, like a holiday pack, basically holiday events, um, where like there were winter themes, like the whole MMO was like suddenly snowing everywhere. You have like, um, Christmassy, like monsters suddenly appearing quests and they're temporary and then they go away. And that is very well translated by this novel. Um, it really does like translate the vibe super well. It's one of the best versions of that ha of happening that I think I've ever read as far as like translating the vibe. Cause there are, are definitely those quests in the story. Um, they could travel to special, uh, uh, temporarily expanded lands where it's like snowy and Christmassy themed. Um, you have a, a weird versions of, um, Santa Claus and Krampus kind of mixed together in there. And I thought that was really well done in the novel. I mean, then you have elves and, and, and a bunch of like um, Christmas and Thanksgiving thing monsters, depending on the time period in the, in the novel. And of course, you have skins for all your weapons and gear to make them more Christmassy themed, which are all very things like people who've played MMOs for a long time have, are going to be familiar with. Um, so if you like those things, if you love those parts of MMOs, um, you're going to really enjoy the story because uh, it does, again, a really good job of carrying that vibe over. However... For me, it didn't work. And again, this is not um, a criticism of the novel directly. Um, it's just that I don't. I don't. I never liked those events in my MMOs. I didn't. I thought, always thought they were super annoying. And I, I usually it's like, oh, I just I just won't play this over the holidays because I thought they were so annoying. Um, but like I said, it's, it's like a, not a criticism of the novel directly. There's all the good action, adventure, banter, funny moments in the story. Those also exist. And again, I, I really did like the way that the author kind of did this kind of mesh duality of like Santa Claus and Krampus in a way. Uh, I thought that was really neat. But again, I just, this, the female, uh, the theme of like, oh, it's, it's like a Christmassy event -y kind of situation. And the main plot isn't really advanced a great deal in the novel at this point. I mean, there's still like minor character development aspects of it. Um, for like, individual character arcs or advance it and you get more information and you advance a little bit of plot points there. But overall, as far as like the main concepts of, of the novel, of like them trying to free themselves, um, there, there doesn't end up being a super lot of advancement there. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. So th uh, this, the story almost feels like, again, exactly what it says it is. It, it, it feels like it's a, like almost like this side quest adventure that's here. It doesn't really have, mess with the main storyline too much, but it is super enjoyable if you like that kind of stuff. And for me, it's just like, oh, I don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's all it is. And so for me, it gets a score of six out of 10, but this was definitely one of those uh, times where I'm like, if you like holiday theme MMO stuff, um, if you love those little expansion packs or those little event Christmas events in your MMOs, you're really, I think you're really going to enjoy this. It's just that I, I never did. So sorry. Gets a score of six out of 10 for me, free Haven online winter dungeon land book number three. Okay. Next we have a uh, small medium, big trouble by Andrew Sipple. Um, it is uh, 295 pages, $4.99 that is not available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Chase Barrymore dreams of adventure, excitement, and getting the heck out of her pastoral Halvan village. When, but when adventure finds her, she'll be scrambling to save her family and friends from a necromancer's wrath. Outmatched in almost every way, she'll have to use her wits, charisma, and a bit of divine favor to figure out the path to victory. Even worse, she'll have to figure out ways to deal with the weird and nigh-immortal beings that call themselves players. And she'll have to do it with the most powerful uh, with the most powerful she has available. Words. That's what it says, folks. I'm not I'm not misquoting. That's what it actually reads as. Um, Violence is not her forte, but cunning, deception, and careful negotiation with unstable and self-centered sociopaths might just win the day. 
uh, and save herself and her family from this horrible situation, which she is undoubtedly not to blame for in, in the slightest. A little RPG romp from an NPC's point of view. So there you go. This is actually a very accurate description. Um, I think it does a really good job of summing the main points. Um, again, two ninety five, four dollars and nine cents, a little high priced. Um, but again, it is what it is. Um, I think this is actually a very entertaining little RPG story. It is set in the Threadbare universe, which I don't think is advertised enough here in the story. Because um, when you read the novel description, it doesn't really say anything about it being in that Threadbare universe. And I think that's a really good thing for the author to kind of promote. Because even though the main character Threadbare isn't in the story, it's the exact same um, RPG world. It's the same rules. It's the same class system. And and so for people who enjoyed that series, I think they're really going to enjoy this as well. But again, it's not something that's being advertised or promoted as being in the same universe. Um, and I think that's to its detriment. Uh, the story is about a Havlin, which is essentially the author's version of like a Havlin Hobbit, Hobbit people. Um, a girl who yearns for adventure, uh, when her town is is kind of content with the boring, slow-paced life. Uh, but then she gets what she whistles for, and it's very complicated. In the story, there's good world-building, good action, and good adventure. Um, and I think the one of the things I think is probably to the detriment of the story is that it's not as unique as Threadbare is. So maybe that's why the author didn't want to describe it that way, but that's only speculation. Um, because in Threadbare... From like the very first page of the story, you're hooked because it's a it's a very unique premise of like, oh, this is a teddy bear golem who's leveling up in this RPG fantasy world. And that's very unique and it's a very great way of like catching the reader immediately. In this particular novel, um, the story starts a little bit slower. And everybody's already kind of familiar with what the halfling is. And the world that's described is very much of the Tolkien-esque Hobbit village, essentially. Um, at least in the at least in the beginning. Uh, where people don't exactly learn for adventure, but they're very gossipy and they have some particular skills. There's definitely an effort by the author to kind of RPG that <laughs> that whole description up and describing like how the how the uh, Havlins have special like uh, like extras class skill slots and special abilities and like cultural stuff and there's a whole like effort there. But it it's kind of a slow beginning, um, and and that might be a little bit you know, uh, off-putting for some readers, but it, it actually really gets really good once you get past the beginning section of it. Um, when one of the main character, about like the 16, 15% mark, when the main character, um, well, I don't want to spoil it, but about that point, the story really picks up. And from then on, you get lots of great action, good adventure, and you get like a really interesting story that's, to me, um, really good. It's not quite as good as Threadbare, I think. I think I believe I gave almost all the novels in that series, like an eight out of 10. This one doesn't quite get the same score, but it's so really entertaining. I think the main character in the story is, is good. It's very interesting. There are some crossovers between the Threadbare universe, like a thread per storyline and this one that I think readers of that series are also going to enjoy. Like you're going to get some cameos. And I think maybe in the future, those two series are going to cross over a little more. I'm not, that, again, that's speculation. Um, even though like the main character Threadbare does not show up in the story, other characters from that series, are and it's on the cover so it's not a spoiler um but it's fun game mechanic wise again same rpg universe same rpg mechanics um the author did a really good job of consistently carrying over those rpg mechanics um and adding like some world culture to it um overall had a good time with this it really like i said once you get past that setup phase in the beginning the story really is pretty fast paced there's a lot there's a really good action good adventure and it goes to rpg action kind of adventuring kind of stuff um and so there you go um also i i personally loved the introduction of like story elements with players um which again which is in the novel description it's not a spoiler but you actually get to see player elements of like people from other universe who are players and get reborn when they die so it's a very interesting addition to the universe as well uh, for me it gets score 7.4 out of 10 that's small medium big trouble with a score 7.4 to 10 if you like the threadburst stories you're probably gonna like this too okay next we have Blackthorn, A Beautiful Nightmare by Scotty Hooch. It is 516 pages, $5.99, not available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. A young man with a dark past has come to be filled with self-loathing. Scott Logan spends his days pretending to be a joyful person to mask his soul-crushing loneliness. Intimate human relations seem, seem an impossibility to him until one day the inexplicable happens. The entire world fell asleep at the same time. The earth was said to be upgraded by those who supposedly ruled over it, and from that moment on, the dream was born. Join Scott Logan on his journey into another world linked to his own, one where onions walk on two feet and force people to cry for them, 
and into a reality where the truth is the very of his very soul is revealed. Um, and it says this is a story set in the Project uh, Scott multiverse. Um, so there you go. Uh, okay, um, this is a collection and reworking the author's online serial series of the same name, Blackthorn. So if you read that, you're gonna, probably going to film with some of the major elements in the story. But I have to say, um, I originally read this story on Royal Road um, um, years ago, like several, of course. Uh, um, I believe it was 2016 when I read it, and it was I think it was up, up for about a year or something or so by that point as well. Um, and I was super happy to, to see it on Amazon because uh, the story had definitely expanded. Like, if you read that original story um, and you're reading this, this one definitely adds a lot to it. So there's definitely an upgraded purchase price to this, and it definitely justifies like picking it up here, even if you've already read that particular version, uh, at least from the time when I read it. Um, there's fleshed out game mechanics. There's a better werewolf storyline from what I remember from when I'm reading it originally. There's a really good character development. There's good banter. And of course, the um, great trademark Scotty Hugh Tumor. Um, I think when this originally was written three, two, three years ago, the author was still trying to kind of find his his vibe, his kind of uh, storytelling style in some ways. And, 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 and when he reworked the story and put it on Amazon, you can definitely tell that there are... Um, there's a lot more experience in, in the kind of storytelling he does that has been incorporated into this novel. So it's, it is definitely a great improvement from what I originally remember reading. Um, the story, again, ha unfortunately has a bit of a slow start. Uh, but once you get past, again, the, about the 15% mark, there's like it's super interesting, super exciting. Um, it has a really good, interesting developments uh, in both the real world and the game world. And it's one of the rare stories where I was just about as interested in what happened in the real world section of the story as I was in the dream dream game world. Um, those stories, even though they didn't have RPG elements necessarily, were still actively interesting because of the way that the author focuses on um, his storytelling involving like really good interactions between characters, good dialogue scenes, good, interesting, flirtatious moments between characters, and just like good, like um, situational comedy moments. And it was like always very entertaining, even in like, again, the werewolf sections. Um, as far as the Let's see what. Um, so yeah, the whole world in this in the story is in this game verse where they can essentially when they dream they get transported to this RPG fantasy game world where they have RPG powers, fighting monsters and crafting. Um, and what you know Scott Blackthorn wants to do is to use this opportunity to become more powerful before. And again, this is from the story where that system is supposed to be like fully implemented on Earth in like a year's time from when it starts. Um, and so you. Part of the story is is regular RPG venturing. It's mostly a slice of life story where you're following the main character as he balances like his retail job um, and his dreaming gaming life. Uh, and it's a very, like I said, it's mostly a slice of life, but it's still very interesting. And even the real life storylines are very like interesting, at least to me. Um, on the game mechanic side, things are very consistent, save for the few places where the game rules update um, and change a little bit um, from fairly normal stuff, gaming stats, levels, HP, all that regular UI stuff. Um, there is a very interesting skill mechanic in there where like the main character can choose to slot um, primary, secondary, tertiary skill slots, and they have different benefits and, and different rates of, um, of progressing and leveling. And so where he's choosing to slot those initially, and, and as he gets more slots, what he chooses is kind of a strategic choice. I think that added a nice little bit of strategy to the character limit section, and as it goes on, nice levels, of course. Um, and also crafting in the story is really what I actually think crafting is one of the better parts of the game uh, side of, of the storyline. That I, I personally really like the synergy skill. Even originally in the original version, it was always a very interesting way of, of doing crafting and advancing stuff that uh, uh, that I hadn't seen before. So it's a fun system. Um, I should warn you, um, the author has many series in in his collection. Some of them are very um, sexual oriented. They're 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 harem stories and and there's um, sexual content in some stories. And this one kind of has minor elements of those. This one has minor harem elements. Mostly, it's that several women in the story have romantic interest in the main character eventually. But that's about as harem-y as it gets. Um, but there are a lot of sex jokes. There's a lot of innuendos, sexual references, and a lot of flirting. Um, but there is no sex in the novel. So just be aware that even though you see those connotations and even though there are sex words used, um, there's no actual sex in this novel. So there we go. Um, also, the story does get dark in several places. And I only mentioned this because some people are turned off by the darker elements, including mentions of um, rape and those experiences. And that there are no rape scenes in here. 
it doesn't actually happen to anybody in, in the actual story that's described. It's more of like, oh, this is a character's backstory, or this is um, something that's happened to somebody the main character knows, and it really influences how he treats Thor or why he is the way he is. And it's more like backstory stuff. But um, for some people, that's just a no-go. For me, it's just like, oh, it's all in the ha- past. It didn't bother me in the, in the least, because again, it's, it's stuff that happened before any you know, the character stuff before we enter the story as readers. Um, and it also is a part of motivation for characters to exist and be the, who they are. Um, and I think it's it's handled, uh, pretty, um, pretty well. Um, but again, it does get dark occasionally. Um, overall it's a good story and I was generally sad to see it end. Uh, this is actually gets the best score of the podcast episode, uh, with a score of 7.8 out of 10, um, black thorny, beautiful nightmare with a score of 7.8 out of 10. Definitely go read it if you haven't had a chance to. Okay, on to our last review. It is going to be Refuge, Land of Dreams, book number three. It is 380 pages, $3.99. It is not available on Kindle Unlimited. I'm just thinking, nothing here seems on the podcast seems to be on Kindle Unlimited this week. Um, here's the author's description, though. Refuge is no longer safe. The Valder were led there centuries ago by their goddess Valdis, and now she has gone silent. After their failure on the island of Ascension, John and his friends must travel overland to Darkguard and down into the Under to reach refuge. Pursued by vengeful players, ancient vampires, and suspicious elves, the journey will be anything but pleasant. They must succeed, for if they don't, Valdus will fall and their friends and Valda will be doomed. Uh, there you go. Um, and honestly, there's almost no mention of MMO stuff in here at all, of it being little RPG. Uh, but it definitely is. If you're a fan of the series, uh, you'll probably like this one as well. Um, there's a nice, this is actually a really nice recap at the beginning of the story. So if it's been a while since you've read the, the novels or you're just jumping into the series, um, I think the recap does a really good job like catching up on the major elements of the story. Um, after that initial catch up, the story kind of focuses on setting up all the pieces to help the Baldus, which is a dark elf kind of race in the story. There's really good adventuring, there's questing, there's good world building, um, even some magical enchanting, so some crafting to a degree in the story. But most of this novel is basically set up for the next book, where like it's the really big quest that, that they kind of touch the bases on at the end of book two and you know throughout book three. Um, it's still like again really good action adventure. There's some nice world building. I was disappointed to see that the rural life storyline is definitely minimized and it's not really important at all at, at this point. I think there's like probably one element of it uh, with main character's dad that I thought, oh, that was a nice little interesting addition. Um, but other than that, it's just like, oh, it, it, it's kind of, it, most of your time is spent in the game. Um, so it is what it is. If you liked the earlier books in this series, you're probably gonna like this one as well. But again, it is mostly just set up with like some good adventuring, some good world building and some good like exploration of like uh, different crafting stuff in there. So um, it's enjoyable. It's not my favorite in the series, um, but it's still good with a score of 7.2 out of 10 for Refuge, The Land of Dreams, book number three. That's again, a score of 7.2 out of 10. So there you go. That's it, folks. We're done. That is it. It's probably one of the shorter episodes of the year for the podcast. Um, Thanks for hanging out with me, folks. Thanks for watching, for listening. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, and our webpage at LibertyPodcast.com. And, of course, there are plenty of other groups and Facebook groups, um, including, you know, Liberty Books, Liberty Society, um, the Gameless Society, uh, the Fantasy Nation. Uh, also all, all great communities on Facebook where you can kind of hang out with, with your favorite authors and other readers and get recommendations and stuff. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast and every shape or form and want to support us, you can always find out ways to do so at littlebitjapodcast.com slash support. But again, thanks folks. Nice to hang out with you today. Um, have a happy new year and I'll see you in 2019. And until we do hang out again, folks, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody.